Um, has anyone of you heard about the OpenSSL Debian bug? <laughs> so, first, so, sorry about our English. Yeah, we know it's pretty poor, so our it's apologies. Pathetic. The word is pathetic. Yeah, according with pathetic. the dictionary, it's pathetic, the word. Um, let's go, uh, go again. Has anyone of you heard about the Debian OpenSSL package uh, bug? How many of you? Yeah. How many? Well, a lot. Okay. okay. It will be easy, yes. This will be easy. <laughs> so, um, I start uh, with a brief introduction and some uh, history about how it, how the bug was introduced in OpenSSL and how it affected uh, this package and uh, cryptography. And then um, Luciano will show the, the most funny part, the live demo, and maybe even how to conquer the universe. So, <laughs> which <Hey man. laughs> he became a, a master of the universe. <laughs> So, um, okay, this, uh, so this bug uh, was caused by a Debian-specific patch uh, introduced um, almost two years ago and remained uh, unseen until this year, a couple of, of months ago, when our friend Luciano discovered uh, the, uh, this problem that affected the random number generator in OpenSSL uh, in Debian. Um, this bug affected uh, not, not only OpenSSL, but the under, underlying library, LibSSL, and uh, every package that uh, linked against this uh, library. And not only uh, did it affect uh, Debian uh, distro, but any other uh, dist uh, distributions that uh, are based on Debian, such as Ubuntu. It, al it also uh, affected um, other, uh, or maybe affect, may have affected other operating systems, uh, which are, uh, although not based on Debian, may have imported uh, wikis into them. So, um, how did it affect the the random number generation? Well, in fact, the the entropy uh, got reduced to just 15 bits. So, um, <coughs> the key space. And any, any random number generated will, uh, had to be between, uh, inside this very uh, little uh, key space of just 15 bits. Um, other um, aspects, other features we should uh, bear in mind when uh, that limit the key space are the, the, the platform, that is the architecture, and the endianness, little endian, big endian, uh, 32 or 64 bits. And uh, the length of the keys, for example, if they are 1,024 or 2,048. And well, these are just some examples of uh, cryptographic schemes that got uh, affected by this bug. As uh, you may know, uh, cryptography is heavily based on random, secure random numbers. So this bug uh, affects all of them. These are some uh, of the affected packages, which are linked against LibSSL, either dynamically or statically. And some of them uh, were, were showed off in some other presentations, such as OpenSSH and Tor. So they all uh, relied on the, uh, on the security and unpredictability of the random numbers. So how did this, uh, did this uh, start. Uh, it began, uh, as I said, two years ago when a Debian user submitted a wishlist wish uh, severity bug to the Debian uh, backtracking system um, about some uh, uninitialized uh, variable warning that was uh, being uh, printed by Bygreen. Bygreen is uh, an online debugger that checks for memory leaks and, uh, and something like, like that. So, we show a brief uh, demo. Sorry. 
we have uh, here a problem that just um, request some random bytes into a buffer from OpenSSL and prints them. It's just that. So, can you hear? Yeah. We compile it and link events uh, live SSL. We see it's linked. And let's try it. It prints just uh, random numbers. So um, let's uh, see what what the, this user was complaining about. We'll just uh, link with the original version of um, this. Uh -huh. We're uh, linking with the original version of OpenSSL, uh, that of two years ago, and we're running uh, with Vagrin just to check for any problem. So we can see here uh, many warnings about an initialized uh, variables. Quite a lot, a lot of errors. So um, this is what the user was complaining about. Um, in fact, it affected uh, every package that linked against libssl. So um, the Debian maintainer uh, analyzed the source code and just uh, find out that it was uh, it was uh, due to just two lines of the OpenSSL source code, which are these two lines, uh, which are identical. They are syntactically identical, but they are um, in two different functions in different contexts. Uh, we should notice that the second line is surrounded. Run. We should run. Okay. So Maybe we should run. I mean. uh, I'm not sure. Who pulls the fire alarm? Okay. You look calm, that's good. <laughs> I am not calm, that's bad. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> they, hacked, they hacked our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Should we continue? <laughs> What he said? Oh, uh, he's checking. Be careful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, I can't. I try to continue. <laughs> um, it's pretty hard. Uh, we. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there are people clamping, so the exit the exit is over there. <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like sabotage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is not the light button, this is the alarm button. Please don't touch it. <laughs> gosh. What should we do? We can't speak over that. Uh, we, we can continue. Yeah. It's quite confusing. It's Let's stop it. Okay. Okay. If it happens again, should do something? We have water here. We can use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's go. Ma'am, I'm okay. Are you looking at me? I'm okay. So, um, well, we, uh, okay. So, uh, these uh, two lines are uh, the ones to blame for these uh, unanalyzed uh, variable warnings. Um, but we should notice that, not, notice that the second line is surrounded by uh, this macro. It, uh, it's about other uh, dividing tool, very like Bygreen, that's called Purify. And this is just the, the original source code from OpenSSL, so that this line may get uh, into the, the binary program or not, depending of the, of the compilation uh, options. So let's continue. Um, there were uh, several uh, proposals to, uh, or solutions to this problem, but the um, the most, um, the most, the one that looked more uh, suitable. Suit, most suitable, thanks, uh, was the the option just to comment out these lines, uh, because oh sorry, they are adding just uh, what these lines are doing. They, uh, in some cases, they are uh, taking this uh, parameter, the buffer, uh, both as input and as output. Uh, they take the input from the buffer and add it to the entropy pool. So when the buffer was uh, uninitialized, the, the warning was print, being printed. So uh, the, the in, in fact, this entropy added by some initialized variable is almost uh, negligible. So it, it looked like a good idea just to comment out these two lines. So uh, the, the Debian maintainer, package maintainer, asked to the, uh, the OpenSSL mailing list about these, these two lines. And the answer from a, an OpenSSL de developer was that it was OK just to comment out these, those two lines for the buying purposes because they didn't uh, add any, any significant entropy to the entropy pool. So, okay, this is the most famous patch lately. It just commented out those two lines. But how did this affect the random number generator? You remember the, the function we just see, uh, we just saw a few uh, minutes ago? It was run bytes. When a user wants to get a, a random uh, string, it calls run, uh, this function run bytes uh, with a buffer, which is both input and output. Um, this function ta uh, takes some entropy, almost negligible, from this buffer, and when uh, the the state of the random number generator hasn't been initialized, it calls the run poll function which takes care of, of this, um, taking or adding entropy from several sources, such as the, the system random device, the user ID, the process ID, and the current time. This is all through the run add function. Uh, finally, we got the, the process ID again, just in cases for multiprocess and forking, just to avoid the collisions in, in the random number generated. <coughs> so the, here is the result of the commenting out the second line, that, that which was surrounded by the macro. Uh, we saw it, it doesn't add any significant entropy, so it's not a big deal. The problem relies on the, sec on the first on the first commented outline, which uh, affected the run add function, so uh, in such a way that, okay, in such a way that uh, none of these uh, entropy sources or randomness sources uh, were were uh, read into the the entropy pool, and as a result, the only source of entropy remaining is the current process ID. This is what uh, limits the, 
uh, the entropy to just 15 bits, that which is the, the maximum process ID of the system. So we may, uh, we may wonder why this, uh, the, the second line was commented, which has this, uh, this uh, effect. Well, in fact, with the Debian uh, developer tested the um, OpenSSL with Bygreen, just running the re uh, OpenSSL re regression tests. And in many cases, the uh, run add function is called um, directly, uh, that is not uh, from, from run byte function, for example. So in this, in this um, function, which is OpenSSL API, that which loads uh, some entropy or some randomness from a file, uh, as the comment uh, says, there, uh, there may be the case when uh, the buffer, we're using uh, more bytes from the buffer than those read from the file, and in this case, Bygreen would print the warning too. So, um, okay, so this is uh, time to get to the funny, the funny part. <laughs> Do you get this part? The, um, the third parameter of, of the run add function is how, m how much entropy uh, is adding to the to a PRNG state. And as you can see, the number is only uh, I, which means only the part have you read. So the initiated uh, values are not taking as entropy in that case. I mean, they, they are valuable as zero. So. Uh, that's that's mean that the 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 entropy by an initialization memory is negligible. That's why. So let's see. <laughs> let's see how can we take uh, advantage of these problems. Well, as Maxi says, uh, random numbers are everywhere in cryptography. So we we will see a few scenarios where we can exploit this flow. The first one is uh, authentication uh, by challenge, also known as, as powerless authentication. How many of you are familiar with this concept? Okay, we will be quickly in this part. Yeah, the client generates a pair of key randomly. When the client wants to create, a, when, wants to log in with a powerless authentication, the server creates a random number, they cipher with the public key, they send the challenge, the clients decipher the challenge, get again the, public, the, uh, the random number, and, says, and sends to the server the challenge response. And if it's okay, uh, access granted. Yeah, fixed with your, with your concept, cool. So let's introduce another, another character. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's a hacker, but you know, the, the, the hackers use command lines, so that's why. And, and this hacker use a really big fonts. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, this hacker uh, no, uh, noticed that the client generate this pair of key, these ones, I, I'm not sure if you can see the, the arrow, this one pair of key was generated by random and was generating in a, a, an unsecure Debian system. So there's a limited space for this key pair. So the uh, attacker creates all of the possible keys, which is two, <laughs> which is two to power fifteen, uh, and try with with the first one, try with the second one, uh, trying to uh, to challenge to respond to the challenge. Sooner or later, the servers will grant the challenge because one of that pairs will be exactly the clone that used it by the by the client. Yeah. So this is really, really easy to get. I mean, it's not rocket science, but some, any of you didn't see the, this, this problem? Okay, Let, let's see an example. Uh, let's see here. Okay, uh, HD Moore provides us a lot of uh, the uh, complete space for all SSH keys. 
uh, it's available in his website. For example, in this case, we have the spaces for the 1,024 and 2,048 length. For example, for the two, um, as you can see, it's it's a really small space. I mean, you you can you can get many of these ones. Let's see how we can uh, try it. Um, we made a little script called Exploiter, which is a really simple script. Yeah, as you can see. The script tries to, with, with each, uh, with each a pair of key, tries to get logged in to the server. Yeah, so let's try to, to see how it's working. Of course, you should know the user. For example, and let's try to, a random server, I don't know. Um, w up here? Okay, let's go. And the port probably is 22, so let's run. Well, let, let's see if, it's, if this works. As you can see, all the, all, the, all the keys are the fingerprint and the number, which is the PID used for create that pair. Oh, how nice. So you, you know what, what an alarm is, you heard it. So sh should we run this script? I mean, push red button, it sounds. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. OK. Oh, oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Well, it's, the script is not working well, but you can die with a bash script. I mean, <laughs> okay. Let's continue with this silly thing. Okay. Well, th this is the first attack. It's a really simple attack. I mean, you 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 can literally be a, in a script kitty because it's a script, so you can use it. <laughs> So let's continue with the other one, but this one is really simple. I mean, let's, let's see how I attack Diffie-Hellman. How many of you are familiar with Diffie-Hellman key exchange? Okay, good. So Diffie-Hellman, you know about that. Yeah? Too, <laughs> too many math for you? Okay. Um, both parts select random number, and after some math magic, they get a shared secret. It's something simple, I mean. Uh, let's see, how many of you are familiar with Diffie-Hellman, ephemeral Diffie-Hellman? Okay, I, I can teach you something new, no. Uh, the ephemeral Diffie-Hellman is just like Diffie-Hellman, but you should discard the private exponent, yeah? So after the key exchange, you discard the private exponent. If an attacker takes control of one of the parties, they can, uh, he can't recalculate the shared secret. So if you want to decipher the communication, you should uh, go against K, which, uh, of course, is a really big number, so you need to brute force it. But in this case, probably you, you, you see the problem. In this, in this case, the X, the private exponent, are random. So if those keys was generated in a vulnerable Debian system, we can look for all of them, yeah? So let's, let's see how this works. We, we just generate a, a list with all the possible x. We first, uh, we, and we try to get the private part of one of the parties, yeah? So if we get the private part of the client, that means that we get the x for the client. And if we can get the private part of the server, that means that we can, that, that means that we get the x of the server. Uh, notice that, even if one of the parties are vulnerable, you are able to recalculate the shared secret. That's something interesting. So we have a demo here. Okay. This, this is a Wireshark. Probably you are familiar with it. Uh, Maxi, me, and Paolo. Paolo is that guy who is looking for a show. I'm, if you have a show for him, uh, please contact me. So we made a modification to the Wireshark in order to decipher a SSL and TLS connection 
with Diffie-Hellman. Uh, with Admiral Diffie-Hellman. So, for example, in this case, the Cypher suite was used with Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. D D that means DHE, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral. So, as you can see, the connection is Cypher it. <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> The, and the, of course, the, you, you can decipher it because it's ciphered, yeah, of course. But if one of the part it's uh, it's vulnerable, you can uh, look for all the all the possibilities. So we go to preference protocols SSL, and this box, this is a new bo a new box was created for us. Uh, let's see if I had the. Um, no. This file contains all the possible X, yeah? The all possible X can be in two length, can be 64 lengths or 128. 128 Beat. bits, yeah, of course, we are talking about the length, yeah, bits. So that's why the, 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 the that's this kind of lines is two power f uh, 16, so that's why it is. So we, we we put this here and this here. Yep, and press OK. In this moment, Wireshark tried to brute force the connection, looking for one of the public keys. That's why it taking taking a while. In fact, looks like hanging, but it's not. It's working. Believe me. <laughs> oh, there is. So okay. And there is the connection deciphered. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't thanks me, thanks Kurt. <laughs> the Kurt is the, okay, it's okay. <laughs> it's the guy who comments the line. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he gonna kill. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that, that's, as you can see, that this is a really big problem. I mean, you can, you can do the same thing for SSH. Uh, so if you transfer secrets with SSH connections, in the last two years, uh, you should note it that you are compromised a lot. Uh, for example, if you if you if you copy your private PCP over SCP and no passphrase there was not ciphered symmetrically, and in that case your PCP is compromised too. Sorry. So uh, as you can see, it's a really big problem. Yeah. Continue. And another another scenario, and this one is really, 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 I don't know, really strange scenario, but it's really funny too. It's DSA. How many of you are familiar with DSA? Digital signature algorithms, I think. Uh, again, sorry? Oh, many of you, cool. Well, that's good. <laughs> More math, sorry. Okay, that's. As many as you know, there are many variables, public variables. There's P, C, which are primes. G is a generator. Y is the public part. X is the private part. And if Alice wants to sign a message M, she needs to calculate two numbers, R and S. As you can see in this part, the only purpose of R is obfuscate the X, which is the private part. Yeah? And R only depends on K, which is a random number. <laughs> of course, you are seeing the problem now. If a message is signed in an unsecure environment, in a weak environment, in a vulnerable Debian, in that case, you can recover the X. You just make some math workout magic, and you can uh, isolate the X. I'm not sure if the correct word, but you can put the X alone in one part of the equation. And of course, uh, as you can see, S, it's a public value. K, it's a value which what we're brute forcing. Uh, the hash of M, of course, you, you should know it. And R is the public value, of course, Q2. So you can, you can calculate the X, which is the private part. That means, even if DSA key pair was generating in a secure, in safe system, 
if that if that pair was, uh, had been using in a in an unsecure system, then your pair is compromised too. Sorry again. So uh, uh, can can you see this? N no. Uh, somebody say no. S say lower. No. Okay. Yes. 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 yes, yes we can go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Finish it. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we have a really, really good scenario here. I mean, Debian is the universal operating system, so we can conquer the universe. Yeah, as Max says. Uh, we can do it in five single steps. Of course, we should choose an application. Can be SSH, SSL, whatever. You should see what algorithm is using. For example, if an SSL connection, if you had a pickup of the last two years, Maybe you, you work for the NSA and you have all the pickups in the world. But that would be great in that case. It's not great. The way it's not great, but um, you, 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 you see, you need to see which algorithm is using when in the, in the cipher suite. Then you should uh, generate all the possible uh, key. That means two to the fifteenth minus one because OpenSSL can cannot run as init so. You, you can save one of the keys. Times free. Why times free? Because there's free combination with Indianness and, bi and bits. I mean, uh, Debian runs in 32 bits, little Indian, 32 bits, bigger Indian, and uh, 64, little Indian. I'm not sure if I said it in the correct way, but uh, that's free combinations. Free combinations, so you, you, should, you should generate all the, all the, all the keys. Of course, if we if we are gonna to conquer the universe, you should conquer all the platforms. So that's why you should uh, multiply by three. Uh, all this space can can uh, be something really easy to generate. Uh, in in few hours, you can generate all the possible keys. Uh, and then you should brute force. Uh, there are many options here. You can um, authenticate yourself in a asymmetric. Uh, with uh, using asymmetric keys, as we as we can see, as we see, you can contact uh, the whitehouse.gov and try to to brute, brute, brute force him. In this case, you need a, you need a quick public key on a server, so it's a possible situation. You can do a man in the middle attack uh, uh, in the same way that you, we generate all the clones of the pairs. You can generate many clones for RSC RSA. Certificate, R S A certificate. Yeah. Uh, so you can you can uh, create a phishing situation or something like that. Of course, you in this case you need to to create a man in the middle scenario. You know it, that is really hard. You need a multi vendor DNS bug. <laughs> you need to poison in caches. It's really hard. <laughs> not. not you didn't go to the Dan talk. <laughs> okay. okay. It's it's tomorrow. In it's, fact. it's to new T tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is the Dan talk. So that's why you are not laughing. Uh, okay. <laughs> he was in black hat too. I, I have news for you. <laughs> Internet's gonna be exploding these days <laughs> because uh, this little problem with DNS. Where are you living in in a Tupperware? <laughs> you, you should know this word. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you uh, probably Dams want, wants to give you the surprise tomorrow, I'm I am so stupid. I'm, but okay. Don't tell him. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't take don't take him. Don't tell him. Yeah. Another scenario, a possible scenario, is the cipher connection uh, made it with one of the part uh, vulnerable. Just as we did with Wireshark, there's uh, many other tools you can uh, attack SSH2. Uh, in that case, you need one of the parts outdated, which runs a Debian uh, vulnerable in this moment. At least you capture traffic in the last two years. Uh, maybe don't. Uh, there's agency that made these kind of things. I don't know. Maybe if you didn't know the Dan problem, maybe you don't you don't know about these things. So I am, I am noticing you. 
Uh, another another problem, another uh, scenario, a possible scenario is uh, attack cipher uh, symmetric encryptions, uh, storage or connections. You know, uh, in many cases, when, uh, for example, in a storage, if you want to cipher in a storage, you create a random key which is symmetric. In that case, you should need to create all the possible keys and just decipher it. It's something like that. Many many uh, backup systems are vulnerable to this flow. Uh, in that way. Uh, and of course, uh, as, we, as we see, you can attack the DSA uh, private part. There are tools uh, made in this. Uh, we want to give you the URL in the th next slides, I think. In that case, you need a message signed in a, as in a weak system. That means that um, the non-repudiable, I don't, I don't think it's, repudiable means something for you? Non-repudiability. <laughs> Repud okay, that's strange word. No, non-repudiable. <laughs> the property of non-repudiable <laughs> was losing in DSA. Repudiable? <laughs> Repudiability. Repudiability? Also. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, James Bond. <laughs> and of course, the last step, uh, ensure your power. <laughs> okay, uh, that is the, the related work. The first one is the, um, the open, the HD Moore tools, which has the, all, the, all, the, all the key spaces for SSH. You can download there, there are many length, so you, can, you don't need to, to calculate them. The second link is uh, our our patch for Wireshark. The third link is a, a Ben Snort plugin to detect communications using weak uh, weak Diffie-Hellman exponent in SSH. So you can get an alert if one of the parties are running weak. Uh, okay, weak uh, weak keys. So Ben, are you here? No, he, he ran with the fire alarm, I think. <laughs> or maybe with the rocket issue. <laughs> uh, the third one is uh, SSH tools. That's, uh, the, in that link, you can find ways to decipher SSH connection when one of the parties are vulnerable. And in that link, you can find a tool for get DSA part, uh, uh, parts with a with a signed in message in a weak environment. The other, the Firefox SSL blacklist add-on, it's a plugin for Firefox in order to detect if you when you are connected with a with an SSH server, if the certificate it's blacklisted. Uh, um, you need to install two extensions there. One is the extension for check itself, and the other one it's the database with all the blacklisted uh, Certificates. The the other the Open ID Debian PRNG DNS Cache Poison Advisory. Uh, it's from yesterday. I mean, tomorrow we I think we get drunk, <laughs> but we found this and we decide to put it anyway. Uh, n nowadays, oh, nowadays since yesterday, uh, you can't trust in Open ID anymore. Sorry. <laughs> If you combine the problem with the PRNG, uh, that means uh, clone certificates, with the DNS uh, cache poisoning, with the Kaminsky problem, uh, OpenID can be fakeable. Uh, that's why. That's because uh, OpenID doesn't use CRL certificate revocation list CRL. So uh, when, in fact, nobody uses CRL. Well, not nobody. Uh, how many of you are Windows Vista user? So you, you are the only one who, who uses it by default. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yes, please, please, yes. You're safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the other ones should install by, by hand. Um, but uh, the only people who, who have CRL by default are the Vista users. You have other problems, but you are safe in this case. <laughs> Um, and uh, the last link is the Debian wiki where you can find 
uh, all the packages affected and how you should regenerate the keys for each packages. Okay, so let's continue. So, some countermeasures. countermeasures. Of course, you, you should uh, read the Debian wiki uh, for more details, but one of the countermeasures is update libsl. Of course, if you are a Debian user, how many of you are Debian user or derivatives? Ubuntu, Kubuntu, or something like that. Okay, well, probably most of you uh, do an upgrade daily. <laughs> I see some faces like, mm. <laughs> Okay, in that case, you should, you should upgrade it. Uh, the other problem, uh, the other uh, countermeasure is look for uh, compromised keys. Debian provides you a nice tool to, to do that. Uh, I can, uh, maybe I can show you. It's called um, SSH bull key. I don't know if you are familiar with this tool. The Debian users, are you, you are not familiar with these tools? Okay. Well, Damp up. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's good because uh, you are learning something. <laughs> so, okay. let's see. For example, in this case, uh, there are some compromised keys here. For example, this one, which is host compromised, as you can see. Uh, there are some ones that are not blacklisted, so it's safe. Uh, The, this checks for your, your uh, of course, is it, this is on purpose. I'm not using compromised keys. Cool. Uh, uh, in, the, in one of the cases, it's unknown. I can't find it. Okay. But let's go on. So you, you know this tool now. You can write like this, and you can check all the keys on your system. Of course, you need to be root uh, because you need to read it. Okay, let's continue. Uh, well, you should look for weak keys even if you are not a Debian user. Maybe one of your Debian's user export to your system weak public keys. So in that case, uh, you have a hole in your system. I mean, a really big hole. Uh, you can put some, a little elephant in that hole. Uh, you should regenerate all the S key uh, if you use it in, a, in an affected Debian system. Of course, well, you can mitigate the problem with Firefox, uh, the, with the blacklist, uh, with the blacklist add-on. Uh, this is nothing work in all the issues, but let's leave the details. And if you are a Debian user, uh, if you are running a SSH server in the Debian user, you can check this option in order to uh, avoid that uh, users with weak keys connect to your systems. Of course, uh, all, the, all the traffic affected in the last two years, uh, you can do nothing for it. I mean, the milk is already split. So let's see some repercussions. Okay, these uh, numbers are from our friend uh, Jeren. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, our he, he is, he is German. <laughs> Uh, he, he works in Haysec, and he, he, they make a, a survey with 100,000 uh, web servers. They are looking for uh, man-in-the-middle situations, so they detect 3% of the servers of the people who have a signed a CA uh, are, are running weak certificates. This is number from two weeks, ago, uh, two gigs, two weeks after publications of the advisory. So if we extrapolate this number to the global numbers, maybe to uh, 24,000 uh, weak certificates are running uh, these days. Combine this with the DNS problem and you get, will get a perfect phishing situation. So um, another repercussions on Debian, of course, I am the Debian developer. This problem touched my deep feelings, we, we get the Pony Award there? We, we got the Pony Award to the most epic fail. We have it here. Say hello to the Pony. <laughs> um, there are some, some things that you should know before uh, criticize us. One of these is that Debian needs to patch the systems. I mean, all the distribution patch software. That's because in, that, in most of the case, upstream has not the same goals than uh, 
than the distributions. In this case, for example, for OpenSSL, it's not something big to have Valgrind problems. In, in, in Debian, this is something uh, really huge, so that's why the, the problem starts. Uh, in some case, upstream is uh, hostile. Hostile? I, I think the word is hostile. I mean, they are bad guys. No, not bad, but not friendly. Not friendly, yeah. Well, open as a guys uh, are from the BSD school, and you know they are not friendly guys. So, <laughs> uh, of course, we, we can we can we can audit all the code because it's a lot of lines of code. So, let, let let's see. Uh, Debian is working on visibility. Do you know about the Linux law? How many of you know the Linux law? Who go? The Linux law says, uh, given, an eye, given enough eyeball, all the bugs are shallow. So uh, le we, are going, we are working on uh, create many eyeballs. That, so we are working on visibility. So many eyeballs will see the code. Uh, in, th in that case, we are uh, trying to get public the version control systems for all the sources and okay, working on patches.debian.org, which is, will be a place where the patches will be there. Um, the, the issue here is maybe it's not a technical problem. I, I mean, maybe the, the upstream has not an easy way to see the patches. Maybe it's a policy problem. The, the, the developers are not uh, obliged to publish the patches. Uh, maybe it's a social problem. Maybe, maybe we should be more friendly with our co-developers and we should ask in a better way. And that's the, we, we, maybe uh, the problem is in the conjugation of all that sets. So let's see some conclusions. We are hurry, as you notice. Uh, the first problem here is uh, review twice, patch once. If the Debian developer uh, uh, follow the data flow problem, they, he will notice that the only part where buff is touching, it's there in the lining comment. So the problem is, uh, if, if, you, if you notice that run out, uh, don't have nothing, that's a problem. So uh, another issue is uh, don't write fancy code. I mean, if uh, an initialized memory doesn't uh, contribute with something uh, substantial, so don't do that. Uh, of course, uh, make a lot of comments on your code. That will be good. Uh, ask with details, uh, uh, the Debian developer the Debian developer uh, just asked with few lines. You should put the context of the line. You should put what are you trying to do. Uh, if many people complain about something, maybe it's something uh, huge. A lot of people complain about binary problems in OpenSSL in many, uh, um, um, from many years ago. Uh, in fact, one year, one year ago, uh, frequency key question is why uh, OpenSSL has a lot of warning problems in binary. Uh, of course, another another first uh, another big issue here is open source, uh, and I'm I'm activist of open source, but open source doesn't complain the Linux law uh, conditions per se. That means open source doesn't mean a lot of eyeballs. Uh, uh, how many of you are activists of open source? Well, many of you. Okay. So it's not enough with, with, op, with open source. You should see the code. So that's, uh, uh, that's what that, that line means. That here is the thanks. And of course, we are uh, answering question in room number? 105, down this corridor, straight across the hallway. 105. OK. We Thank will you. listen your insults there.